Hello, and welcome to Impossible Conversations, the programme where we interview key figures in the art world. Today, I'll be speaking to French painter and designer, Sonia Delorme. So, Sonia, when were you born, and what kind of upbringing did you have? I was born on November the 14th, in 1885. My father was a foreman of a nail factory, but I remember very little of my birth parents as, they, as I moved to St. Petersburg to live with my mother's comparatively wealthy brother and his wife, Anna. My mother wouldn't allow my adoption until 1890, and then I became Sonia Turk. I was only five at the time, so they're the only parents I have ever really known. Henry, my father, was a Jewish lawyer, and a very successful one, so we spent many summers travelling Europe, visiting museums and galleries, and I attended the Academy of Fine Arts in Germany. How old were you at the start of the Great War, and what you were doing immediately before the outbreak of the war? Were you making, exhibiting, or selling your work then? I was 29 when the Great War broke out, visiting Spain, actually, with Robert and my son, Charles. Robert, my husband, is my second husband after my failed marriage to Wilhelm Oud, who I'd married to please my parents. They disliked my artistic career. Oud allowed my entrance into the art world through his exhibitions and his connections. I met Robert in Paris, where I'd been living and studying. We married in November 1910, and Charles was born in January of 1911. Robert and I shared similar passions with the Neo-Impressionist movement and geometric shapes and colour. What did you do during the Great War? It was around this time that I decided to move away from naturalism and perspective. I had the idea of making for my son a blanket composed bits of fabric like those I'd seen in the houses of Ukrainian peasants. When it was finished, the arrangement of the pieces of material seemed to me to evoke cubist conceptions, and we then tried to apply the same process to other objects and paintings. I remember the first cubic, cubist works being shown in Paris in 1911, and Robert had been studying Michel Eugène Chabot's colour theories. When one design is placed next to another, it affects both similar to pointillism. I painted Bull Bullier in this style, and in 1913, our friend Guillain Apollinaire coined the term orphism to describe it. After this, I met Blaise Sendras, the poet and my good friend. I illustrated his poem, Prose of the Trans-Siberian and Little Johan of France. There was a long accordion pleated book using simultaneous colour principles merging text and design. I sold these by subscription. It was popular with the Paris critics, and I believe it was shown at the Autumn Salon. How is the use of colour different from pointillism and orthism? Pointillism is a technique using dots of primary colour placed next to each other, which trick the eye, whereas simultaneous colour can be used on all forms, not just abstract shapes, but more complex ones. It focuses on the distribution of colour and their effect. Where were you when the war ended, and what were you doing? We had decided not to move back to France to, uh, when the war broke out, and after spending some time in Madrid, moved to Portugal, where I mostly painted. The Russian Revolution brought an end to the financial support I received from my family, so we began to search for a separate source of income. That year, we met Sergei Digilev, and both worked on his production of Cleopatra. Robert on the staging and I designed costumes. Around this time I decided to start a business. I founded Casa Sonia to sell my designs for fashion and interior. They were popular in the Madrid salon. What did you do in the years immediately after the end of the war? When the war ended, I believe I was still in Madrid working at my boutique. The success of Casa Sonia inspired me to travel to Paris twice in search of an opportunity in the fashion business. I offered a partnership to Paul Poiret, however he rudely de declined, claiming that I had copied his own design and was married to a deserter. We moved back to Paris permanently in 1921, and sadly sold Rousseau's The Snake Charmer, which solved our financial difficulties. It was in the 20s that I began making clothes for private clients and friends, and I created lots of fabric designs for a manufacturer in Lyon. I then started my business with Simultane as my trademark. At the same time, I designed sets of costumes for various French plays. 
and in 1924 I set up a fashion studio with Jacques Hein and lectured at the Sorbonne on the influence of painting and fashion. I was designing haute couture desi uh, textiles for the Paris <laughs> and participating in this artistic salon. The Great Depression liberated me from business, but I still designed Perrier and Heim. What are your key interests and how do they influence your work? I believe colour is the skin of the world. I have always been fascinated by the use of colour, as has Robert, and hence it influenced our work and caused the creation of simultaneism. And my environment inspires me. The subject of my paintings, the vibrant flamenco singers in Madrid and the Portuguese street markets. The modern world also inspires my work, like the electric street lights in Paris. Living in the Iberian Peninsula really opened my eyes to the origin of light. All these subjects have inf infinitely diverse interpretations through the focus of colour. Who do you consider your greatest artistic comrades in the years following World War I? My fellow artistic comrades would be Jacques Heim and Robert Perrier, without doubt. The focus of my work after the war was strongly textile and fashion-based, as I had mostly painted over the war years. They allowed me the opportunity to explore this new area and supported me through it. Of course, my husband was also an artistic companion as we created our own style of cubism together. You talk a lot of your husband, Robert. Did you ever collaborate with him? Our most notable collaboration was the creation of Orphism. However, I helped him decorate two pavilions at the 1937 International Exhibition of Decorative Arts and Modern Industry. However, I didn't want to be part of the contract of the commission. I chose to help Robert if I wanted to. Who influenced you most in your work as an artist? When I was young, I loved to visit the exhibitions and galleries in Paris of post-impressionist art, such as Van Gogh and Rousseau, and the Fords, Matisse and Durand. My work was strongly influenced by these artists at the time, for their bold colours and movement. Of course, Robert and Michel Eugène Chauveau inspired my use of colour. In Robert Delaunay, I found a poet who wrote not with words, but with colours. They created the colour theory at the basis of my work after 1912. Blaise Cedras' work gave me a push, a shock. The book was one of my first collaborations and forced me to work in a way I'd never before. What is your greatest achievement before 1935? My greatest achievement was probably in 1925 at the International Exhibition of Decorative Arts and Modern Industry, which I designed and decorated my pavilion, Boutique Simultane. After that, my work became known nationwide in London, New York and Amsterdam. What art movement do you feel most attached to during the 1920s? Well, I suppose orphism is a movement I feel most attached to. Simultane and orphism, mine and my husband's own invention of movement completely designed to our specification. Orphism was our more vibrant interpretation of cubism. In the 1920s, simultane was a focus of my fashion and textile design, colour scheming and painting within fashion. The Art Deco movement encompassed my work and allowed for my experimental designs, inspired by Dada and realism. As well as simultaneous colour, I incorporated geometric shapes into my work. The straight, boxy shapes of the 1920s clothing perfectly displayed the printed fabrics and designs. And what do you think your legacy will be? I hope I'll be recognised for my inventive and dynamic approach to art and design in all its forms. Mine and my husband's legacy to recognise our pioneering and thoughtful approach to the influential power of colour, but maybe it will be it will inspire and affect the use of colour in the present. Well, thank you very much, Sonia. That was very interesting.